Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you jamming? Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> yes, we be jamming. We were jamming with the preservative of Jesus. <laughs> God is good all the time. All the time. He's faithful and he's true and there's none like him. Thank you, Master. You know, we've come into this world sent by God to fulfill a mission. And one of the things that we've come into this world and we've always asked ourselves, who am I, why am I here, and where am I going? That's a question of purpose. Does everybody get it? It's a question of purpose. And so many times individuals lose purpose because of being misled. They pick up something and agree with something. It's very easy to pick up something. That's all the enemy has to do is emotionally affect you and you just opened yourself to something. And he reattaches. And then what he does is he draws your attention to other places than where it's supposed to be. And you begin to lose purpose. One of the things of losing purpose is losing identity or who you are. Listen, every one of us has been sent into this world to fulfill a mission. We've been sent into this world to fulfill his purpose, not our own. That's why we're to exchange our will at a constant level. Exchanging your will for his will. That's where that exchange prayer is vital. And there are levels of purpose. One of the things that we're always trying to reach is the third level of everything because it's the master's level. Remember, Jesus had to pray three times to reach a level. He rose on the third day to reach a level. Everything's associated with the third level or what we call the master's level. And that's a place where you no longer live and he lives. Does everybody understand that? You no longer live, but he does. That is the level you and I are reaching. So that, you know, Jesus came not to fulfill his will. Everything that he said is to come to fulfill the will of the Father. He even expresses not, not my voice you hear, it's the Father's voice that you hear. Amen. I do the works of the Father. See, that's the level that you and I want to reach in that arena to where we're no longer looking for our purpose, but his purpose. Amen. It's got to be done in everything, in every decision, every area where we go, everything we purchase. What's the purpose? And is that purpose pleasing God or displeasing God? And if it's not of God's time, it's not God's purpose. I've seen individuals because of their own purpose, personal purpose, and because of fear that pushes them, they want to have a family. And they end up marrying an individual to get pregnant. But they're unevenly yoked. So they have children, and eventually they have no husband. And they're left with only one purpose, and that is to raise a family because all the other purposes have been erased. Because now they're in a place of catch-up. It's very difficult to fulfill the pur pur purpose of God if you're always fulfilling your past or entangled in your past. Does everybody understand? Everyone here has made mistakes. There isn't anyone else who haven't, but that's where we sever ourselves from those things. So we got to ask ourselves, what is my purpose today? And you know, sometimes God rearranges things, but it's according to his order, priority and divine order. That's why he may reset something in that morning. If, but if you're not purposing yourself to make connection to the presence of God, to make connection to his word and align yourself with the truth, you will always fulfill your own purpose and not his. And the worst thing that we can be is successful in the wrong assignment. Amen? Praise God. Would you turn to 1 John chapter 3?
1 John chapter 3. Oh, yes. So we want to get to a place where we reach the total purpose. Amen? The total purpose. What is the total purpose? These are gathered purposes that are all together. Because there's multiple purposes. But there's one true purpose where all of these purposes come together and form one specific purpose, and that is to fulfill the will of God. In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 7. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Little children, let no one deceive you. Hello. Let no one what? Deceive you. Let no one deceive you. Let no one deceive you. Let no one trick you. Let no one mislead you. Let no one attach emotional attachments to you. Let no one, not one thing, mislead you or misdirect you to another purpose than the purpose that God has predestined for you. Let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this what? Purpose. For this what? Purpose. Purpose. The Son of God was manifested that he might what? Destroy the works of the devil. So the purpose is to destroy the work. That is your purpose. Does everybody get it? If it's his purpose, is it your purpose? Yes. It's to destroy the works of the devil. So you may ask, what is my purpose? That is your purpose. Amen. That's your purpose right there. It's written. It's to destroy the works of the devil. Amen? So we don't want to be deceived. We want to practice righteousness, and we want to depart from evil. I'm going to say it again. We don't want to be deceived. We want to practice righteousness, and we must depart from evil. Overall purpose is to destroy Satan's works of influence to stop his kingdom from expanding. That is your purpose. Does everybody get it? Everyone say, my purpose, my purpose. is to destroy, destroy the works of influence to stop Satan's kingdom from expanding. That is our purpose. This is where we must ask ourselves, am I fulfilling that purpose right now? Now, there's a process of training for reigning. There's a process where God sets us up so that we can learn how to attack and destroy. Amen? Remember, this is a military, military operation, not some religious garbage. Amen? I don't get into arguments over doctrine, people. You don't get it, too bad. Go get filled with the Holy Spirit and learn, just like I did. Amen? Get involved in training and you'll learn. That's why he says assemble together and learn, right? We're not being taught by a man. We're being taught by the anointing. And I'd rather be taught by the anointing than a man or a woman or whatever. And the anointing teaches us. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. <clears throat> What's your purpose? Destroy the works of influence, of Satan's works of influence, and to stop his kingdom from expanding. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. That's where you always look at, am I fulfilling my purpose? First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. And if I'm not fulfilling my purpose, am I willing to fulfill my purpose? Because my purpose is now his purpose. Amen. Amen. In verse 26, let's speak it. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, 
Not many mighty, not many noble are called. That's why he called us. But God has chosen the boneheads of the world, <laughs> the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. See your calling. Your calling has a purpose. Does everybody get it? And your purpose is to destroy the works of Satan's influence. You do that by also exposing it. You do that by warfare. You do that by praise and worship. What we did here tonight was destroy the influence of Satan's kingdom. Why? We pulled down principalities, powers of darkness. We took hold of territory of spirits, kicked them in the butt and commanded them to go. We took this territory and we took this heavenlies so that you and I can get into a place and have an open heavenlies. We drove back the powers of darkness through praise and worship. Or you'd be in torment right now. But you're at peace. You're hungry. You want more. Because you've been connected to the presence of God, connected to his word and aligned by the truth now. And now he can feed you. Oh, glory. <laughs> so you see you're calling your purpose. Now, everyone say, I'm called, I'm called. to battle. Yeah. I'm, called I'm called to battle, yeah. which means to fight. Amen? It means to defend. It means to attack. It means to overcome. Not in the flesh, but in the spirit. So if you're not fighting... Can you destroy the works of Satan's influence? No. No. You can't. And Mark 8. Hallelujah. Mark 8. Now the first place that needs to be destroyed of Satan's influence is in me and you. So we need to drive out everything that would cause influence. Amen. Amen. Amen? So that you're not fighting inwardly, your battle's outwardly. But so many people haven't taken the, won the battle yet inwardly. So they got an inward battle and an outward battle. Mark 8, verse 34. And you know how you come through to that place? You sow. You pray, you speak, because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. If I'm going to speak light, I'm going to eat light. Light is going to start to penetrate. It's going to start to drive out all demonic holds. So the more you sow, the more you change. The more you sing, the more you sow. The more you change, because what I speak is what I eat, what, is I, what I eat is what I become. Amen? In verse 34, let's speak it. When Jesus had called the people to himself, with his disciples also. Like, does everybody see that? So he called all the people and the disciples, not just the disciples. And he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. That is the formula, isn't it? That's required in everything that we do. Deny yourself <laughs> is the first purpose that you and I must reach. That is the first level of purpose that you and I must reach. It must be a consistent. You must purpose in your life that you will deny yourself. You must purpose it. You and I must purpose it. And everything we do and every decision, I must purpose to put myself behind 
and put Christ in front. That's called denying yourself. You and I must purpose it to separate your, your old man and nature from the new man and nature. In other words, separate yourself from B.C. and A.D. Verse 35. For whoever desires to save his life will what? Lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes into the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Wow. You know, we had a historic event just happen in Jerusalem. Is a prophetic word that says 70 years. 70 years is a representation of a generation. So Israel became a nation in 1948. 70 years from 1948 is 2018. We just reached that generation, and the Lord said, and so what happened in this period of time, in this year, the United States Embassy moved its embassy to Jerusalem, proclaiming that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, which always has been and is biblical and has been written. But the world does not want that to happen. All nations will come against that because they're influenced by Satan's works, his doctrines. And in this event, that generation, Jesus said, I will return and I will fulfill my promises and I will pour out the early and latter rain and I will bring revival and it will be the greatest harvest ever. But first, Jesus will return through the body of Christ before he personally returns. So you and I have entered a time of plenty before there will be a time of famine. And God is preparing us. He's storing up. It's like when rain comes to fill up reservoirs. So when it begins to get dry, people will know where to go to drink so they can, get, so they can maintain life. It's the time of Joseph. Remember what happened to Joseph? He, God put him in where? In prison. He had him hidden for a long time. See, we are of that Joseph generation with the Elijah anointing. And he's pulling us through now. He said it's hidden. Now we're coming up. And in this, God is creating storehouses for people to come in reservoirs, for people to come and drink and be fed and clothed and shelter. And it's going to get more and more and more. But there's got to be a place where you have purpose in this all. Again, you must maintain that purpose of denying yourself or you can't be connected. Oh, hallelujah. In 1 Peter chapter 1. We are in exciting times. The world has never seen this and never will see this again. It's an exciting time. We need to go around and like shake everybody. Wake up! Wake up! I had a dream one time that it was, it was a strange dream, of course, but I was at a college and everybody was outside and they were all around these silver tables and they were like, fellowship in an eating. I was going around to every student shaking and going, he's coming! <laughs> he's coming! I could go, Father, tell him that you're coming. Come, he's coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then I woke up going, he's coming! <laughs> Hallelujah. 
I want to share one other thing. I, there's a guy that I associate with at the gym, and I work out with once in a while. And uh, he came to me yesterday, yesterday morning, and he said, I got to tell you something. And, and the Lord put on my heart to tell you I had a dream. And he began to tell me about this dream, and, and I don't remember all of it. The only thing that I saw was, uh, that he, and I remember was, he said he saw Donald Trump, his head on a cloud in heaven. And he said that he saw him overseeing the nation of the United States as for protecting. And the Lord said to him, this is my prophet that I've chose to oversee and protect and restore this country. And make it great again. And it will spread through. And he said when he woke up. He said the fragrance of the Lord. With frankincense and myrrh was in his room. And he, that's how he fell on his face. And began to weep and cry. And the only, <laughs> I, he said the only person that came to mind. Was you to tell you. And I said well praise God. Confirmation. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> See God can speak to you in a gym. Hallelujah. <laughs> First Peter chapter 1 and verse 13. Therefore what? Gird up the loins of your mind or your thoughts. In other words, protect them. Be sober, which means be alert. And rest your hope fully on, upon the grace or what we call the plan that is to come, that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. I want to say this again so you get this. What's he saying? He said, protecting your thoughts. Be alert. Be awake. Be ready. Because grace is associated with the plan of God. Amen? That is the purpose. So he said, protect your thoughts. Why? Because the enemy, that's where the attack is, isn't it? That's where the battle is. You got a 100-yard football field right here between one ear and the other. And there's a battle going on. And you can't let the enemy score. You must destroy the other players and the refs. <laughs> no mercy. <laughs> they got to go. Therefore, gird up the loins or gird up the thoughts of your mind. Protect, be sober, be alert, be ready. Rest your hope fully on the plan of God that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And be as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance. That's what he's talking about, the old man. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all of your what? Your conduct. Because as it is written, be holy for I am holy. And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, reverence, honor, and respect, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of the Lamb, without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and your hope are in God. In other words, protect those thoughts. Cast down thoughts and imaginations that will come against the knowledge of God. Be alert. Listen, again, how does the enemy reattach you? Through your thought system. Do you ever go into a place and next door, next thing, you know, I mean, you can go into a store and they're playing all the secular old music which is beginning to reattach you again. Next thing you find yourself going, huh? oh, snap, you're starting to beat to the, and next thing you know, you're singing and you got to go, wait a minute. Break that off, cast it out, and stop. Re disconnect yourself from that emotional attachment. Because that's what the enemy wants to do. When I'm in the store, if I start sensing it come, I just start going, Hallelujah! <laughs> People next to me pass out. I don't care. I'll lay hands on them. But yeah, we got to bust that. 
You start sensing thoughts coming, hallelujah. What are you doing? You're reconnecting. Because the enemy's trying to disconnect you. And then he, if he can disconnect you, he'll reattach an emotion to you. And next thing you know, you don't even know, but you're battling it. And then it begins to grow root and get deeper and deeper and deeper. The next thing you know, you become a lustafarian. Hello? Because now, what's lust? It's an overwhelming desire. Now you're desiring this. And that's how people fall. That's how they backslide. That's how they get misled. And some people will swear it's God, but it ain't. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, that was God. No, you just wanted to fornicate. No, you just wanted this. That's all. Come on, let's get real. Why? Because you opened yourself up. So we want to protect our thoughts for, so it doesn't get any attachment so that we can have purpose to fulfill the will of God in our life, for our life, and through our life. Amen? With what? With a new man. With a new man and new conduct, which is the character of Christ. It's called the divine nature. And 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. Is everybody okay? Yep. So we actually want to reach the third level of purpose, which is all the levels gathered, all the purposes gathered together where we reach the master's level. And verse 1, or something like that, Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Yeah, let's speak it together. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace, which means what? God's plan. That, it, that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must what? Endure. You must purpose to endure. Do you understand? You must purpose to teach. You must purpose these things. You must purpose to be faithful. That should be a part of your purpose. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in an athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules the hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, of the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things things for the sake of the elect that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Wow. So you and I must be strong in the plan of God. That must be purpose. Again, we must purpose to be faithful. We must purpose to be a teacher. And we must purpose to cut loose of the emotional entanglements of this life that cause problems. We must purpose to advance according to the integrity and morality and character of Christ Jesus in everything we do. All of this is a part of reaching the third level of purpose. The purpose, we want to reach the master's level, and we must purpose to manifest Christ's character. That must be a purpose for you. Amen? Amen. Again, we are called to battle. Our purpose is to destroy the works of Satan's kingdom. And our destiny is to infiltrate the world system so we can rescue souls. Amen? Isn't that what it's about? Colossians chapter 2.
Colossians chapter 2 and verse 1. Oh, hallelujah. Let's start at verse 1. For I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you in those in Lodicea. As for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may, not, may be encouraged, being knit together in love and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both in the Father and Christ, <clears throat> in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order. That is re representation of priority. Everyone say priority. You and I must purpose the priorities, our priorities every single day. That's why you go to prayer, so God can reset your priorities for that day. Your priority to the prior day might be different than what God releases that morning. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Powerful. As you, therefore, have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world, according to the Democratic Party, according to the Luciferian agenda, according to the one world order, according to the deep state, and that according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are what? Complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. And we are what? In him. In other words, we must purpose to keep things in order by what we call priority purposes. It is the parallel according to the kingdom business. We're daily resetting priorities, which will unfold purpose. One of the things we're going to need is wisdom. We're going to need knowledge. We're going to need understanding. We're going to need faith. And we're going to need to be complete in him so that we don't lack nothing. Nothing. So there's a place where you are purpose yourself to trust him no matter what you're going through. I trust you. No matter what. Doesn't go how you feel. See, what, one of the things that God is always trying to do is bring us out of how we feel and stop allowing emotional decisions to mislead us. You know, BC is emotional decision. AD is Christ's decision. Amen? James chapter 1. Oh, yeah. James chapter 1. Again, right now, there is, there is a transition going on. We are going through, and many are going through, the process of awakening. There's a process of awakening. And you and I go through a process of awakening until we hit the point of awaken. When there's a place of awaken, when that purpose person is awakened, a purpose is released. And what the enemy likes to do is put people back to sleep so they lose their purpose. Amen. Then they have to get reawakened again because purpose has been stolen. <coughs> so there may be a purpose that God is releasing or trying to release, but he's trying to get us awakened to it. 
so that we can receive it and then execute it. James chapter 1 and verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you feel like it. Hello. My brethren, count it all joy when you what? Fall into various trials. It didn't say if. It says when. Hello. Knowing that the testing of your faith, the testing of your faith is your connection to the presence of God, produces patience. Patience is endurance. Amen? But let this endurance, and let this patience have its perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Now, if any of you lacks wisdom, obviously that's what the main root of this is. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives it to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in what? Faith, knowing that what he's asked, he has. With no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord, for he is double-minded, unstable in all of his ways. He's double-minded in what? Unstable. unstable. People that have become unstable lose purpose. Amen. In fact, people that maintain an unstability state of being never have purpose. They go through every wind. <laughs> they are anxious for everything. They search, they're looking for everything. They're trying to do everything and they don't get anything done. Hello? So you, we need to purpose ourselves to endure. That means to connect to the presence of God as word and align ourselves with the truth. We reach a place where there's, we lack nothing. Nothing. You know it's coming even if you don't have it. Because if God has called you to do something, purposed you to do something, he will provide for it every time. Every time. Oh, hallelujah. Of course, this is all a part of training, isn't it? Training for reigning. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So we know the overall purpose is to destroy the works of Satan's influence. Amen? Amen? That is our overall purpose. But then there are certain purposes that God has released to us so that we can attain that or be positioned. And he's preparing us so that as a constant, no matter what we do, we're always looking at that. That is a part of your life and a part of your character all the time. It isn't about pleasing man. It's about pleasing God in everything we do. Either that or we're not living in a born-again state of being. There's a difference between being saved and being born again. Amen? Oh, yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 16. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Well, we shouldn't guard anyone according to the flesh. Amen? Amen? Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he has a purpose. Does everybody get it? Amen. And in this purpose, he's a new creation, and old things have passed away. Old purposes have passed away if there was any. Amen. And behold, all things have become what? New. new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are what? Ambassadors. Do ambassadors have a purpose? Yeah, you can't be an ambassador without the purpose. We're ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you as Christ, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For me, he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Wow. 
So as a new creation and new purpose of being like Christ, we are to reconcile the lost to Christ. Amen? <laughs> so in this, our destiny is to infiltrate the world system, isn't it? That's a purpose, isn't it? So we want to purpose our destiny to come into manifestation. We purpose these things because we know it pleases God. Anything that you know please God, you purpose it. Does everybody get it? So we are to infiltrate the world system as ambassadors for Christ. That is a purpose. I, wherever I go, I'm looking. And two things. Is there someone you want me to speak to? Well, it's because it's reconciliation. I'm always looking. Is there someone you want me to see? Something you want me to do? Is there, uh, um, is there some satanic works that need to be broken? Wherever I go, wherever I am, that's what I, the two things I'm looking for. Of course, I bind a strong man wherever I go before I get there. I ask the Lord to go before me as a consuming fire and snare them up, burn them out, get them out of there, drive them out so I can walk in wherever he sends me. And then when I'm there, if there's somebody there that he wants me to speak to, so be it. And sometimes it doesn't. He says, I'll speak to them, just carry me there. Amen. Why? Because we're the temple. So he can send you to a place and you don't have to say a word. And he's ministering to everyone in that room. I've had that happen one time. I went to a, one of those 12-step meetings. Man, I wanted to tell everybody about Jesus. The Lord said, hush. I was like, what? And I sat there and they'd go around the room and everybody's telling all this stuff. And I'm like, no, no. And they, they're talking, and I sat there for an hour. He said, I want to show you something. And in it, he showed me that he came out of my body and went and ministered to people. He said, okay, let's go. At that time, I was chauffeuring the Lord. I said, okay, where do you want to go? He says, let's go. I'm driving down the road. And this guy that was in the meeting is doing this to me. He's flagging me down. He says, I need to talk to you. I said, what? The Lord says, see, I spoke to him to talk to you. Now pick him up and tell him about me. And I did. I gave him a Bible, ministered to him, and sent him on his way. See, we don't realize who we are in Christ and who Christ is in us. Remember, Jesus said, if you see me, you see the Father. Remember, the Word became flesh. Now, we must become the Word. That's why we ask to be filled with the Spirit of God so that wherever we go, He can do whatever He wants to do. And then there's times He'll use your hands and your mouth and sometimes your foot. However he wants to do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> First John chapter 4. <laughs> First John chapter 4. <laughs> Did everybody get the title? Anybody get the title? What was it? <laughs> Who said it? What? Total purpose? Okay, I'm going to give you the choice. Third level of purpose or total purpose? You got it. The title is total purpose. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joint effort tonight. First John chapter 4 and verse 17. Total purpose. <laughs> Glory. Is everybody there? 
Let's speak at verse 17. Love has been what? Perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Does everybody grab hold of that? So, is, so as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love, so we must purpose ourselves to perfect love of God in us. Now, I want you to understand that love is not a feeling. It's a choice. Not that there's not a sense. When you love someone, you're in love with them. There's an emotional arena where you care because love is an ex exceeding care about an individual. But if you look at the scriptures in 1 Corinthians 13, love never mentioned a feeling. It was a choice. In fact, God said, I chose you. I loved you first. Now you can choose to love me. So we choose to love him. That avoids emotion. That's why marriages break up. You know why? Because their love has been based on lust, not love. Because lust is an emotion. It's an overwhelming desire. But when there's love, Love is trust. True love from God is an area of trust. It's an individual that doesn't, doesn't get moved by offense. Loves unconditionally. Does everybody understand that? Not saying that some divorces don't deserve it, you know. Because it's just never been ordained by the Lord. Anything that's not ordained by the Lord usually falls into lust and not true love from God. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love, and we want perfect love. We love him because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? And this is the commandment we have from him that he who loves God must love his brother also. That means that we must purpose to forgive. Does yeah. everybody get it? We must purpose to forgive. That's that. It doesn't mean you have to hang with the person. You still forgive the person. Even if the person still wants to do the stupid things and there's a moron. Hello? You still forgive them. And you let them run the course and you pray for them until they finally turn when they hit a wall or something. It's called a reality wall. Some of us have to hit it plenty of times. I know I did. I had lumps all over. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 6. Second Corinthians chapter six. So we want to purpose ourselves to reach perfect love. Amen. In verse 14. Okay. Are you ready? Do not be unequally yoked together with what? Unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with? Lawlessness. And what communion has light with? Darkness. And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part is a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them, I'll walk among them, I'll be their God, and they can be my people, but they must do something. They must purpose something. We must purpose to come out from among the world and be separate, says the Lord, and don't touch what is unclean, and then he will receive us. He will be a father to us, and we will be his sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So you and I must 
purpose to come out of the traditions of the world and live according to the tr traditions of the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen? Oh, yeah. That's the world belief system. And when people get caught up in the world belief system, the perception is always flawed. They can't see correctly. And I'm going to close in Matthew 6. Total purpose. Matthew 6. Verse 25. Oh, yes. Matthew 6, 25. Look at the birds of the air. 25. Therefore, I say to you, do not what? Do not what? Worry. worry. So we must purpose not to worry. Amen. Don't worry. Be happy. Yes. You need to, sometimes you just need to say that or sing it. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubic to a stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Does everybody grab the whole of that? Does your heavenly Father know that? Amen. Do you think you might need to purpose that? Amen. He knows what I need. Yeah. And he knows the time he's going to release it. Not according to my time. He has a purposed time and everything. Oh, we have a hard time with that one. Everybody wants drive through. Amen. You know. I still don't go, don't go up my driveway. I cut across the lawn, man. You kidding me? <laughs> you can ask my wife, will you, you still bring in dirt in this house? <laughs> Anyways, that's just, you know, I want shortcut. We all want shortcut. We want it today. But we must purpose that God's will is not shortcut. There are no shortcuts to heaven. But you can shortcut across the front lawn. I can tell you that. <laughs> Verse 33. Let's close it there. What does it say? This is it. This is the final thing. Ah, total purpose. But seek first what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, don't worry for about tomorrow. For tomorrow, worry about itself and its own. Sufficient is the day and its own trouble. Just purpose what God wants, the purpose. All of these add up to what we call a total purpose. Amen. So if you're looking for a purpose, remember, the overall purpose is for me and you to get in a place where we are destroying Satan's works of influence. Infiltrating the world system as ambassadors. But in that, God has purpose 
for me and you to do on a daily basis and in inward purpose so that his purpose is that he has me and you to do is so that the old man can be separated from the new man and the divine nature of Christ Jesus can be expressed so that people see him and not you and me. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Father, we are honored and blessed. We ask, Lord, for your mercies and grace and allowing this seed to be imparted in us and deep-rooted so that it grows and bears fruit for your glory according to your purpose. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the Lord.